So a little bit of backyard bushcraft today and uh, the thing I want to do is cover a really step-by-step -step tutorial to getting bow drill and the intended audience for this video is for people who are really interested in friction fire and bow drill in particular uh, but haven't gotten their first call. And uh, I see a lot of YouTube videos on the internet demonstrating bow drill technique but a lot of that has to do with demonstrating the technique as opposed to trying to provide an instructional on how to do it in a step-by-step -step and easy uh, fashion. So I'm going to try and do that today. One of the common questions I see on the uh, various bushcraft forums is people who are, the first time they're trying to do a call, they'll ask questions like, well, what wood do I use? And I'm getting smoke, but I'm not getting a call. And part of that is basically trying to take on too much I think and I think if you're trying to learn bow drill first there's a lot of elements there's just the technique itself and then there's the aspects of, of foraging uh, for wood in the outdoors and, and, and starting to get into more challenging aspects of, of basically doing everything on site using raw materials and if you're trying to go right to the far end of the extreme end of things of foraging on site and building all your materials and then getting bow drill and you haven't gotten your first coal yet, you're really taking on too much. Apart from this aspect of trying to forge the wood, uh, usually when I answer questions like that on blade forms or uh, Bushcraft USA, is the first thing I say is instead of trying to forge for wood and learn bow drill technique at the same time, is to use uh, basically materials that you know will work. And there's a couple of things that you can do for this. Uh, one, you can, you can actually buy bow drill kits pre-made on the internet, which are kind of expensive and uh, you know it's not something I necessarily recommend. Uh, sometimes you can get forum members who are experienced in the technique to send you a kit that they've made and proven. And then the other aspect is to uh, buy lumber and kill drying materials. So one thing I'm using, going to be both for the drill and the hearth, is a piece of cedar. And uh, I went to the grocery store and this piece of cedar, I'll get a shot in a minute, close up of it, is sold essentially for uh, making plank sand. So it's made to smoke fish on the barbecue and this works great. It's already kiln dried, it's beautiful stuff, I know this works. So we'll be making our hearth and spindle out of this plank salmon in a minute. But the next piece I want to cover, so we gather all our materials, is the top piece. And uh, again, there are natural alternatives to top pieces that you can make in the woods, but uh, what happens is with natural uh, top pieces that you make out of wood, they tend to burn out fast and they tend to uh, zap some of the friction. So again, when you're just trying to learn your coal, you want to make things as easy as you possibly can uh, so that you'll guarantee your success. So typically what I really like to use are stones that I've uh, basically pre-drilled divot in. I carry this as part of my kit. And basically, you know, you want something that is nice and comfortable in the hand. And I just use a Dremel tool to cut out this divot. So you can use various types of stones that you find in a rock garden. Again, things that are compact that will fit in a nice little Altoid can, tin uh, is great to have as part of your kit. And uh, that's something that you got to create. Um, another thing that people like to use is shot glass, thick bottom. And here you're going to use this. The glass basically provides almost zero uh, friction. So this tends to be pretty good. Uh, a good safety tip when you're using a shot glass is to cover that shot glass with some duct tape so that way if it does crack on you you don't split your hand in the process. Another material that's a favorite of mine and I lost my last headpiece is a piece of cow bone. I use these for the dogs and their, their chew toys but if you cut a piece of this and you make a divot just like the rock this is actually completely friction free. It lasts great and it's got very good heat insulation properties. So headpieces are quite good. The next step is your bow and uh, I just made one from a piece of mulberry that I, I cut. Mulberry grows like weeds in my backyard. Uh, so uh, again, uh, some of the things that you want in a bow, it doesn't really have to have a bow shape to it. 
Uh, I kind of prefer that, but it's not necessarily. You can have a completely uh, flat uh, or straight stick and it'll work fine as a bow. What you want is that bow does not flex, okay? I've seen some videos where people have a flexible bow and that's just going to cause havoc for you. Uh, for the string, best thing I find works is paracord. Uh, other types of strings that people use will be uh, basically chainsaw poles and you could use boot laces, but boot laces tend to snap pretty quickly. Uh, one of the reasons why I like paracord so much is you can get about 40 or 50 uh, coals off of the same bow, maybe even more. It's just really strong stuff, although it does tend to slip a little bit more than uh, some of the braided materials. Uh, for the bow, I'll get some shots, some close-up shots. But one of the things I like to do is cut a notch running parallel to the string in the handle. I use the, 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 the saw on my Swiss Army knife. And another notch here. I use a little bowline uh, knot uh, to create a fixed loop. Thread that through. And then I have a couple of side notches where I basically, after I, I, thread, uh, after I thread the string through this bottom notch, wrap it around and tie it with a couple of square knots. You want this thread, and I don't know if this is the right tightness, I might have to adjust it, but you want it to be a little bit loose. It doesn't have to be completely tight. In fact, you won't be able to thread your spindle if it's completely tight. So a little bit of loose, and I may have to adjust it the first time after I make my spindle, depending on the size. So I've got that cedar open uh, right now. And again, try and find a piece of board that doesn't have any knots in it. Uh, this is a little bit less than one inch, about three quarters of an inch thick, which is just perfect for a hearth. And again, I can make both my hearth and spindle out of the same material. So I'm going to do that now, and I may speed up the film a little bit just so that uh, you're not bored watching me create this thing. So for the spindle, I'm going to cut off a section, just baton that section. That's going to be my hearth. This is going to be my spindle. So we can see the thickness there, and it's about the same thickness is my thumb, okay? And this is a little bit long, longer than I like for a spindle, but this is soft material and it uh, drills down really quick, so the length is going to help me. You want to make sure this is pretty straight, okay, uh, so that there isn't any bows, especially if you're making this from natural materials with a hearth like this. It's going to be pretty straight. And then I want to have one end that's uh, basically going to be a little bit blunt, and that's what's going to be my drill end. And then the other top end, uh, I would be tapering down a little bit more. Since I'm using, I'm going to be using the uh, shot glass with duct tape, uh, I'm not worried about this, the, the friction at the top end too much, so I'll make them fairly similar. Just smoothing that out a little bit. You don't want it perfectly round. There should be enough uh, uh, flats in your drill so that that string could catch it so it doesn't slip too easily. Okay, our next step is going to be the preparation of our hearth. And uh, we have a really wet ground. So I want to save some of these curls. Actually, I'm going to go find something else for a base. But for the hearth, really not a lot to do to prepare for this. All I have to do is drill a starting hole to begin with. All right, And you want something not too far uh, from the edge of the hearth. So uh, I have enough there. That actually might be a little bit too close, but we'll see how it goes. And then we're going to carve our divot out after we burn this out. 